Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Full work limited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Welcome to Bite Size Bios. This is meant to be a mini sode that will accompany HDTH. Every week, I will pick a person from history and dive into their lives. All right, welcome back to another episode of Bite Size Bios BSB. This week, we are going to look at Ric Flair and do a bite size bio on him and find out just what makes old nature boy tick, or at least find out maybe why he's so popular. I don't know if I do that either, but that is the goal here on Bite Size Bios, which of course is the mini episode accompaniment to How Did That Happen? And last week's HDTH, we talked about apartheid, and that was one of the first real kind of long form serious topics that I really do hope to dive into as the podcast continues. That was always the goal uh, when I started this podcast was to just, cause I'm a deep, deep thinker. I'm always, that doesn't mean it's always smart, deep or, or anything like that, but I'm always overthinking and always just thinking about different things. So I wanted to find a way, as I've said on the website, to just kind of have a, a little place where I can dump all my, my, all the different questions that I have about life and in, 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 in the world. And this is where where I, where I do that. I learned so much um, on this apartheid episode, just just with the just with the, the history of South Africa, which, like I said, that's that was almost half of the half of the episode. Because in order to understand um, apartheid, you have to understand the landscape in which it's occurring. You know, you you have to know. Like I make m- numerous comparisons during the episode between American. Uh, racism and slavery and, and, and South African racism and apartheid they're, they're, you can compare them but they're definitely not the same and only you know only in some ways do I believe they're actually even similar you know and I, I, I mentioned that w- one of the, the large differences that I thought was that you know in apartheid in South Africa they put they put it on paper um, which they did and I say in the episode they, they did do that in America as well there was you know separate but equal and segregation and all that but it was eradicated and it was it was it was done away with much more swiftly than it than it than it was in, in in south africa which we see i mean that stuff the laws and stuff that i was telling you guys about when it first went into effect and then in 1948 were the same that they were in the 1990 and or 1994 i think i saw when i was when, when and i want to mention that when i did the episode i think i mentioned that apartheid ended in 1990 and there's some places that say 1994 I think what it really to 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 kind of explain the, the difference. I believe it ended in 1990 when the um, the, the old prime minister Kirkel, uh, I believe his name is, um, kind of you know decreed that it would no longer be a thing. But it truthfully went away when Nelson Mandela, four years later, ran and became the first um, president, like democratically elected president, I believe, in South Africa under the ANC. I believe. I, I think that's what it is. I'm always trying to you know get get the stuff correct. If I'm wrong, let me know. Um, but yeah, it was. I, I thought it was a really good episode. I think to learn because I've always wondered. I've always wondered where the, who the Africaners were. You know what I mean? Because I have a very limited before this, and still now, I guess, a limited idea or understanding of what of how South Africa works and the, the history of it. When you realize that these Dutch people moved to Africa and called themselves Africaners, with Africans or whatever, like it's I don't know. I, it is a very interesting fact to learn I, I i i was but i know but now i understand that i'm not not why they did it but but that that's what happened that they really did come here and um kind of themselves feel disenfranchised from from their own kind of uh european settling brethren and had to go run inland from their country to you know kind of find a man and make their own way and that is kind of what you get that is what south africa is is, is, the, is the, the continued uh, p- progression of, of of those actions but I'm almost getting to the point of rambling. I pretty much probably am. It was a good episode. Go check it out. It's episode 61. Um, hoping for some more good things to come this this year, guys. I can't say I, I have started to record some conversations 
with people uh, over the phone that I may or may not be making it in some of the episodes that come forward these next few weeks and months. Uh, just trying to keep things change, keep, try to keep things changing up. Uh, always trying to grow and progress here over it. How did that happen? Of course, this is the Bite Size Bio mini episode we are on that comes out every Thursday at 4.30 a.m. As always, if you like what you hear here, there's more where that came from over at httappen.com. You will always find uh, videos and transcripts from the from the previous episode as well as, as, well as the works cited that, tells, that kind of shows you where I got all my information from. Uh, if you want to rate this podcast wherever you're listening to, that's also great. If you want to give us five stars, that'd be awesome. If you want to give us two stars and tell us why you don't want to give us five stars, I would, might even like that even better. I just kind of want to know what you guys think. But um, yeah, I think I've rambled on long enough about whatever. Uh, so without further ado, as we know to do here is the episode. All right. So today we are going to talk about Ric Flair. Learn about Ric Flair and his actual name is up for debate. Uh, the original name that he had. He had a very um, interesting lifestyle, or childhood or an interesting start to his childhood, I guess, a good origin story, if you will. Um, depending on who you ask, he can either be called Fred Phillips um, or Fred Demari or Fred Stewart as far as what his first name was because he would actually end up being um, adopted. And that's an interesting story that I don't get think gets told enough. I've, I've watched some videos, read some articles, and only one, I had to look up and find out the real story behind his adoption. But we'll, 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 we'll get there. But that was, that was his actual name before he was adopted, once he was adopted, his actual name became Richard Morgan Fleer. And that's where you get the Ric Flair kind of thing when he goes into the, into the wrestling uh, ring. And this won't be a very wrestling heavy um, episode. I'm definitely going to mention some things because that's, that's why he's famous. But I, a lot of stuff that I read just went from match to match and kind of explained to you why he's the greatest wrestler and all that stuff. And, and, and he, you know, from what I've watched and seen or saw, and he is, he, you could probably say he was the, the, one of the greatest wrestlers to ever do it. Um, but I just am more interested in, I don't know, why why I don't watch wrestling and I still know who he is. That's that's something that um, interests me because they're, you know, they're people that are just, you, 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 you don't think you're in their sphere, but you are. Um, and he is. So I, so we'll get, we'll get back to him. So he was adopted by his uh, people named Kathleen Fleer um, and Richard Fleer. So they basically just named him after his adopted father. And they would adopt him through what was called the Tennessee Children's Homes uh, Society. Um, and what's wild about that is that they would actually, that place, the Tennessee, the, the Tennessee Children's Home Society, would kind of come under fire and get, um, the police would come in. They were doing some sort of like baby kidnapping operation, um, you know, sort of thing. Um, and if you've never heard of this, what was going on, basically, basically they were selling babies that, that they may or may not have coerced out of um, young mothers that were, you know, maybe they, they coerced them into giving away their children at the time. Um, this was kind of a black market thing. They weren't, they were, there was definitely some un, un, under the table behind closed doors thing. So when you say, oh, he was adopted by the Tennessee Children's Home Society, uh, or, or that's who facil- facilitated the adoption what we'll come to find out is that the Tennessee governor, he launched an investigation into this entire thing. And um, after hearing about the fact that they were selling children, so they weren't, they weren't giving kids up for adoption. They were selling children to these parents. The Tennessee Children's Home uh, Society, which is a lot to keep saying, was closed in 1950. Um, and the state of Tennessee actually sued the woman, uh, Georgia Tan, who was running the entire thing. They, I think I believe they pressed charges. I don't think they ever actually stuck. Um, they said she made off almost a million dollars off these babies. And it's, it almost seems like we're, you know, we're going off. But this is this is this is the people who sold Ric Flair to his parents. This is we wouldn't have Ric Flair if she wasn't selling babies illegally in Tennessee in the in the fifties or whenever this guy, um, you know, was, was born. Get very good, but, but you know, it's, it's it's interesting. Well, nineteen forty nine was when he was born, February twenty fifth, nineteen forty nine. I just thought that was to me that's the most interesting thing that I think I'm going to tell you about this man's life because the rest of it is pretty, you know. It's it, it's out there, but no one was talking about that. So he gets that that happens. The family gets their their child, their their young Ric Flair or Fleer. The, the, the family name is Fleer, um, and they move out to Edina, Minnesota, which is where which is where he would spend most of his time as a child. He would actually end up going on to a boarding school in Wisconsin named Wayland Academy, uh, where he would actually go to high school, and that's where he excelled in sports. He was going to even be a football player in college. There's conflicting reports as to whether or not he actually even did play. 
Um, there's either said that he either signed a letter of intent to play with the University of Minnesota, or he actually was able to play a year. Uh, the jury is still out. But while he was in high school, he did things like football and track and wrestling. And wrestling was where he actually, you know, he he found the love there, I guess. And he, after he didn't play football, he went into a career in amateur wrestling. And that's where he kind of starts to become the, the Ric Flair that we know today. And his debut in, in, in pro wrestling was on December 10th, 1972. And this is like where I said, I'm not going to get into the whole, you know, every match. This is how he got this championship. So not really what this is about. He would um, go on to wrestle other wrestlers like Andre the Giant, um, Dusty Rhodes, Chris Taylor, uh, Wahoo McDaniel, a lot of different people. He would go on to make a really big career. He would win. Um, he, he wrestled under what was called, I believe, the National Wrestling Alliance. I don't want to don't don't at me for wrestling fans. I'm trying to get this trying to get this together here. But he would do that in the early 70s, and that would lead him to, lead him to kind of become an international name because he would then go on to wrestle uh, other international champions. But before his career really kicked off, he actually got into a plane crash in 1975. Uh, everybody survived but the pilot, which is, which is really sad. Um, but when... But, um, so not, I believe another guy got paralyzed, but Ric Flair, he ended up just breaking his back in a few places... But it was then said that after this, he had really kind of devoted himself to, he, he was always flashy. He was always flashy. And we'll get to him being called the, the nature boy here in a little bit. Uh, but he, this was kind of, I guess, I mean, it's an, a new lease on life, if you will. It's almost the same thing that happened. Well, not the same thing that happened with Travis Barker um, when he talked about when he went down in a plane crash. I think he was in a couple plane crashes. And, like, people died in those plane crashes. And, and you know, he, he had this whole, like, why me you know why did i survive sort of thing and I, it's i can't I, i'm definitely not saying that that's what he went through but i'm saying it must have been something in uh, in his brain to kind of think about okay well i'm I, I made it through that so that's gotta you know let's step it up a notch and this was really when he would come into his whole like uh limousine riding jet flying kiss stealing wheeling dealing son of a gun yada yada yeah that's when he would kind of do all that and become the rick flair that we really know um he was said to have done really well with the ladies he's said to have you know, been with a number close to 10,000 women, which is impressive, I think. I'm not, it's either impressive or disgusting. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure which one it is. Um, but he would actually end up being married five times. He's still, he's married right now on the fifth go um, to a woman. Did I get her name? I don't believe I did. Bouncing around here. So he did the nature boy thing, because I always kind of wondered where that came from. And I literally had to Google why do they call Ric Flair Nature Boy? And it, it has a lot there. First off, there was, a, there was a Nature Boy before him who initially went by the name Nature Guy. And he realized that that wasn't going to work real fast. And that guy's name was a man by the name of, what's his name, Rogers? Buddy Rogers. The guy's name was Buddy Rogers. And he had been wrestling since the 30s. Uh, but he was the original Nature Boy. And so Ric Flair had to wrestle this guy to get the Nature Boy name off of him. Now he's our Nature Boy. The, like that has this just he has this swagger and then you know with like the blonde hair and he's just like really like eccentric that is like the nature boy kind of thing which is what the original nature boy he was doing the same thing just not as good as rick flair which is why they said when rick flair came along it was almost a, a foregone conclusion that he would end up kind of taking that name because he was doing it he was imitating the you know original buddy rogers but doing a better version Something else I found interesting is this this guy really is famous, and that's why I say like the the, real, the reason why I wanted to look up look him up was just to kind of see what this guy's all about because like I don't like I said well, I, I don't watch wrestling I watched it as a child um, I definitely did with my grandfather and my cousins in like the nineties you know and I will say I, to, I don't how can I put this when it really came out that it was fake. It was really hard for me to go back to watching it. I remember being like, I don't know, nine or ten, and it was like, you know, it came on like ET or whatever. Like it was news, like oh, like wrestling is fake. Like up until then, up until then, like I literally thought. I think I mean, probably most people around my circle thought that it was real. And I know they say, yeah, okay, they're I mean they're taking somewhat real hits and whatever, but it's like there's a storyline and it's not, you know, it's not the same as like actual like amateur uh, wrestling, which I didn't do that either, but. Or, or, or do I watch it? But I wanted to know why Ric Flair was so famous, and I didn't. I don't know if I ever got to the bottom of it, but I was able to see this guy. He has so many days named after him throughout the country. There's a there's a Ric Flair Day in Columbia, South Carolina. 
Greensboro, North Carolina. There's one in Norfolk, Virginia. It's a, that, that we, you know, I'm I say we we because I'm from Hampton Roads. Um, you know that they did. There's Charleston, West Virginia. Also has a Ric Flair day. I mean, would you have ever guessed? I would have never. I had no idea that this man had so many. Uh, Myrtle Beach. Um, also, I think has um, a Ric Flair day, and they also gave gave him the key to the city. That just feels right. Uh, Marion Marion County, South Carolina, also gave him the key to the city. So this guy's got days, keys to the city. I mean, how many other wrestlers does The Rock have this many keys to the city? I don't I don't think so. I don't know. I guess we'll find out next week. No, but like, yeah, he's he's he's, he's everywhere. He even has his own comic book. Um, what's it called? It's called Ric Flair. Code name Ric Flair. And um, yeah, I mean, I would have never guessed he had his own comic book. I'm just, you know, just trying to just give you all this information so we can all get a grasp of who Ric Flair is, who the who the real man is. And that may be, I mean, besides going into his actual um, wrestling accomplishments and then, or you know, and downing him, they say, like, they say he was a big drinker too. Big drinker. He they say, I don't think they say he doesn't drink. He doesn't drink anymore. Um, but he drank for a long time and was a womanizer and all that stuff. I mean, that's, you know. All right, that was a good episode of Bite Size Bios. I hope you guys learned about Ric Flair. I tried to make it, tried to find a through line, you know, find a narrative. It's hard for me sometimes. Um, but the, the goal of these and what I tried to tell myself when I wasn't sure if I was going to do this one is like, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to talk about people that I don't know about and learn about. And hopefully that you guys will also enjoy me finding out about these things and hope that, that you guys will uh, enjoy the information that you get from this. But we'll see what happens as time goes forward. I definitely have a lot more in the tank for Bite Size Bios. Um, as always, if you like what you heard here, HTTHappen.com, uh, HTTHappen on Twitter, and also HTTHappen on Instagram now. There's not much going on over there, but there is an Instagram to speak of. Always like and subscribe. I appreciate you guys always coming back and pressing play. We'll see you in a couple days with the next How Did That Happen? Lucky Land Casino asking people what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kids' PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.